thank you very much for your time this evening. Oh, it's my pleasure and a very uh, well, warm hello to all my friends in Australia. That's great to hear. Pam, uh, most people don't know, of course, that the United States and Australia has cooperated on space for many, many decades. They've only seen it in movies, etc. Tell us a bit about your uh, involvement with Australia, because you spend a lot of time here and are very well known amongst the space community. Before we talk uh, about the issues in space, tell us about your attachment to Australia. Well, thank you, Christopher. Of course, uh, I think those in Australia, especially those who uh, are members of the space industry, uh, know very well the story that was commemorated uh, somewhat humorously in the dish about uh, the key role that Australia has played in communications uh, all the way back to the Apollo era and uh, the strong relationship also as well in science and technology uh, partnership across space science between Australia and the US. My personal involvement came on my very first public speaking engagement as an astronaut in 1996. I was invited to speak to the Australian International Space School. And it was very exciting for me to visit Australia. I made a lot of great friends, which extended to the South Australian Space School, which led to me meeting uh, Jim Wally, the CEO of Nova Systems. And uh, as it became clear that there was uh, a serious discussion underway in Australia about starting a space agency, I was intrigued at the opportunity to be able to help. And uh, my husband and I just loved our time in Australia, the year of 2018, uh, where we lived in South Australia and had an amazing time. Well, it's a great place to live. Pam, as we both know, the Australian uh, space industry in the 50s and 60s was really quite sophisticated. And uh, we were one of the world leaders and early adopters of technology around space. But we seemed to lose our confidence uh, and decided that we weren't going to pursue that and would instead rely on our friends in the United States. What do you think happened that we didn't pursue space with the enthusiasm that we had in the 50s and 60s? And uh, was it just because we could rely on the US? Well, Christopher, I'm sure that you have can talk about this from the perspective of the defense industry as the first uh, minister for defense industry in Australia. I think that was a, a part of a national strategy, which was uh, to rely on other countries to do uh, research and technology development and uh, rely on alliances. And there's there's nothing wrong necessarily with that strategy. But I think uh, part, part of the problem was at the time, if you wanted to engage in space activities, it was it was a government game. And uh, the government had to make decisions about how it was spending money. Now things are very different. There's a massive economic opportunity in the commercial space industry. And Australia is uh, far from the only country, but perhaps one of the first to jump on the bandwagon and say, hey, this is a whole uh, growing economic sector with uh, a high rate of return, job opportunities that are high tech uh, and really punch above their weight. And uh, I think, you know, it was a, an excellent decision to engage at this time. 